Imagine building an airport in a place like this. It's one of the hardest spots in the world to land a plane. And if you want to build, well, anything here, then you're in for a pretty tough time. But far up in the Northern Hemisphere, hundreds of kilometers inside the Arctic Circle, Greenland is embarking on the biggest infrastructure scheme in its history. No fewer than three airport projects are now underway across a territory that's covered in giant glaciers and freezing tundra with only a tiny population. So what does it really take to construct the runways, terminals and everything else needed for international flights in such an isolated and cold location? And why is it even happening at all? Everyone's heard of it, but how much do you really know about Greenland? It's that big white block of land we've all seen on the map hanging down between Canada and Iceland. You might think of it as being remote, sparse, and more than a bit nippy without a great deal of civilization. And sure, temperatures here can hit minus 25 degrees Celsius, and it has the lowest population density on Earth. But aside from that, there's actually a lot more to Greenland than many realize. You see, it's not just a load of ice. Like the Faroe Islands, it's an autonomous territory of the Kingdom of Denmark, and humans do live here, about 56,000 of them, mostly in small coastal cities. Why not inland? Well, because the entire centre is covered in the only permanent ice sheet outside of Antarctica. It means that if you want to travel between these places, the only option is to fly. That's right, there are multiple airports in Greenland, including international ones, but they're small and only serve a handful of destinations. Only two are big enough to handle jets, and neither of them are close to the capital, Nuuk. To get there, you have to travel on one of the tiny propeller planes that are used across the island, and that is where the dilemma is. Greenland wants to become a bigger tourist destination, but that can't really happen when getting there is a bit of a hassle. The Greenlandic economy is very dependent on, on fish. This means also that it's it has a certain kind of uh, vulnerability to it, uh, and there you wanted to strengthen the economy by building uh, new pillars uh, in the economy, one of the pillars being tourism. In Nuuk, where I'm situated right now, uh, around 60%, 60 to 65 percent of everybody going to Greenland actually goes to Nuuk. And today you will then have to fly to a, another airport and then you'll have to do a domestic flight uh, to get to Nuuk. The solution? Well, build a series of newer, bigger airports that'll make this stunning country more accessible. It sounds simple when you put it like that, but construction of any kind in this part of the world is never straightforward. But before we delve into those difficulties, it's important to outline what Greenlanders are actually getting with these new airports. First of all, the capital's airport is being completely overhauled and is going to become the main hub for international flights from 2025. Upgrades include more than doubling the length of the runway to 2,200 meters and a new terminal with an apron. It'll also be equipped with two taxiways, a new control tower and service buildings. A similar arrangement is happening in Alulasat, Greenland's third largest city, which also has an existing airport. The new airport being built there, alongside the one in Nuuk, will have the same length runway and a list of other improvements that'll be almost identical. Lastly, down in the south of the island, my god, how do I say that? Karkotuk, Karkotuk. Lastly, down in the south of the island, the town of Karkotok is getting its first ever airport. With a 1,500 metre runway and capacity for just 200 passengers at a time, it'll be smaller than the other two and used almost exclusively for domestic flights. Those longer runways in Nuuk and Alulasat will allow bigger planes to land and take off, meaning more passengers from destinations further away. They're also being fitted with instrument landing systems that make it easier to land when there's reduced visibility. In fact, that's just one of many challenges pilots can face when trying to put a plane down in this location. The giant fjords surrounding some airports can cause sudden gusts of wind, low-level fog is not unusual, and runways are often covered in snow or frozen entirely. Those sub-zero conditions aren't exactly great for construction either. The airport is located 300 kilometers north of the polar circle, so you have a very long winter season where it's uh, solid frozen, uh, the water where you, of course, cannot work on, on cleaning up seabed, etc, etc. So, so there are a lot of challenges in, in, in terms of that. 
But before we come on to those challenges, when you look at the attractions on offer in Greenland, like sailing around icebergs, dog sledding and breathtaking hikes, you can see why tourists have paid good money for their plane tickets. Ultra-wealthy travellers from Europe and beyond have spent big on quality and uniqueness, and not just in vacation destinations, but also in choosing their investments. The richest billionaires and CEOs are building a wealth foundation that includes physical assets like gold, residential real estate, and billions of dollars worth of fine art. The QR code on screen right here can unlock the high-powered world of art investing for you too, because that code takes you to today's video sponsors over at Masterworks. It's the art investing platform that's distributed back a total of over $60 million in investor proceeds across their 23 exits, some of which went to investors who didn't even know a thing about art. Over 900,000 members have signed up so far, and that number is growing by the day. And with previous investable offerings from legends like Picasso, Basquiat and Banksy, shares of some paintings have sold out in minutes. But since so many of our subscribers have signed up so far, you can still skip the waitlist and start investing today by going to the QR code on screen or visiting masterworks.art forward slash B1M. Now, let's get back to Greenland. So, what's it like to build on one of the most inconvenient ground types you can imagine? Arctic Tundra. It's where you've got a very cold, barren, treeless landscape on the surface and a layer of permafrost underneath. It can be as hard as concrete in some places, so when you've got to do any kind of excavation, like before laying a runway, it's virtually impossible to do using normal methods. By that, we mean bringing in some excavators and getting them to dig away happily through the lovely soft soil that most airports are built on. It's just not as simple as that here, which is why main contractor Monk Civil Engineering has had to use a strategy that's normally reserved for tunnelling. Blowing the obstacle to bits with explosives. For the larger two airports, around 6 million cubic metres of rock had to be blasted away for construction to take place. That's more than twice the volume of the Great Pyramid. The majority of the time that we, uh, we, we have spent on construction so far has actually been drilling, uh, blasting and moving of rock. Uh, we have blown, literally blown uh, a mountain away uh, in order to make enough space uh, to get a 2.2 kilometer runway. In Karkoktok, it was 2 million cubic meters. The material was then ground up and used to build the runways and foundations for the buildings and infrastructure. Over in Nuuk, the runway was done in two stages, with the southern end constructed first. When complete, air traffic moved over from the old runway, while the northern end of the new one was still being built. A map of the Ilulisat runway shows that some of it goes into the sea. That meant removing a thick layer of clay sediments, which then had to be backfilled to avoid settlement over time. To do this, a huge 200-ton crawler crane from Lieber was brought in to handle all that dredging, as well as other tasks. These included placing large stones alongside the runway to protect it from coastal waters. Crew members had to rely on weekly shipments for parts and equipment, and worked long shifts to stay on schedule. Because while life in this part of the world might seem laid back and peaceful, the bitterly cold climate ensures the clock is always ticking. The winter months are when the mercury drops way below freezing, which makes any kind of construction here impossible, even with your biggest coat on. Between December and April, work had to stop entirely, and some jobs could only be done during a small summer period. As for when it's all due to finish, like with many large-scale infrastructure projects, there have been some delays. Nuke's new airport was initially set to open in 2023, but that had to be pushed back to late 2024. That was mainly due to Covid, and new regulations coming in since the original plan was drawn up. But it wasn't the only complication that appeared during the project's conception. The runway in, uh, in Ilulisat has uh, unfortunately been a little bit delayed because we have faced some issues construction-wise. We had 13 weeks where we couldn't get supplies into the construction site. So the construction site was basically closed for 13 weeks because, well, the water was frozen. So, so you can prepare everything, but you can't set the date uh, on, on when the weather is ready for you to start doing these kind of things. Ilulisat is now due to complete in 2026, same as Kokotok. Then there was the issue that came up earlier on. Before it was decided which companies would do the construction, a state-owned Chinese firm bid for the job. The trouble was, Greenland is a key strategic point for the United States. There's still a US Air Force base here, which is also part of a large missile defence system. 
The idea of Chinese-made airports close to a US military site made things a little tense, and the bid was dropped. Instead, Denmark would help build and fund the projects. Which brings us on, in turn, to the price tag. In total, the scheme was expected to cost around 5 billion Danish kroner, which is about 700 million US dollars. Karkotok has been financed solely by the Greenlandic government, while the other two are a partnership with Denmark, which owns a third of the project. The money not covered by equity, which is around half of the costs, has been borrowed from the Danish Central Bank and the Nordic Investment Bank. Although it might not sound like much for three airports, for a country the size of this, it is a lot. The total figure is about 20% of Greenland's GDP. But it's what these airports could do for the economy in the future that is where the real potential payoff is. Currently, foreign tourism brings in almost 2 billion Danish kroner a year. With the new airports close to opening, that amount is almost certain to rise in the coming decade. Not long ago, building three major airports in a place like this would have seemed ridiculous. But thanks to some extreme construction, some amazing teams, and some very big ambitions, this amazing location is about to pull off something extraordinary. This is, is not a, about building a second airport in Berlin or a, a third runway in Heathrow. This is about making development possible in a country that will be able to change also the economy of the country. Once again, it powerfully demonstrates that not many places on this planet are out of reach when the people that work in this incredible industry really put their minds to it. This video was sponsored by Masterworks. You can skip their waitlist at the link below. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of Arctic engineers through our investment into Brickborough, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at brickborrow.com. And as always, guys, if you thought this video was seriously cool and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you subscribe to the B1M.